Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, I extend a very warm welcome to you all in this course on Sociology of Sanitation. This is the fourth day of lecture in the series of 10 lectures on Sociology of Sanitation. Today, in this fourth lecture, we will discuss the sanitation and its gendered approach. So, gender and sanitation relation that will be discussed today. In the last lecture that was on caste and sanitation, we tried to decipher the relation between caste and sanitation. How does caste relate to sanitation and how the different aspects of sanitation is closely associated to caste system in India. Today, we will discuss the gendered form of sanitation. As we all know that today, India is lagging far behind from optimum utilization of human resources because half of the population is not contributing optimally. Affectionately, we call our nation as Bharat Mata, but unfortunately, Indian women are economically exploited, politically bonded, socially humiliated and culturally bereft. In Indian society, we are supposed to pay sufficient attention to women's situation. Girl children are tamed to become housewives and boy children, they are trained to earn money and generate income. Before we start discussing the real issue of gender, first let us start with discussing with the concept. What is gender? As you all know that the concept sex and gender, these two are different terms. Sex is a biological term, whereas sex is a socio-cultural construct. It is the debate between nature, that is sex, and nurture, that is gender. Sex is facts across the world. In every society, everywhere in the world, the sex male and female will remain same because physiological angle or from anatomical angle, world's women are same and male, they are same. But every society, it frames its norms, patterns, values related to particular female or male that is known as gender. So, gender is created. It is not we take by birth, of course not. Gender is created. One belongs to X society or Y society. Accordingly, his or her gender will be differentiated. In case of debate between nurture versus nature, it is said that society molds the psyche of individual that look, you are a girl, you are supposed to be having this way, look, you are a boy, you are supposed to be having this way. In this context, renowned feminist Simo de Boa writes in her magnum opus, The Second Sex, that one is born, not born, rather becomes a woman. It means one is not born means it is not biological, but becomes means when we socialize our children, when we nurture, we train according to our norms, patterns and values, we train them that look you are a girl, you are supposed to behave like that or you are not supposed to behave like your brother because he is a male and you are a girl child. You are supposed to follow certain do's and don'ts and these do's and don'ts list goes on. So, this is the basic difference between sex and gender and we are supposed to relate today the relation between sex, uh, gender and sanitation. Before we start discussing actual relation with gender and sanitation, let us have a look upon some basic facts related to gender inequality prevalent in the Indian society. Female literacy rate in India is just 65 percent and if we talk about the gender gap 
in literacy rate, it is 16 percent, one six point. It means, gender gap means, there is gap of 16 percentage points in the literacy rate of female and male. In India, for understanding the situation of the ratio of male and female, sex ratio is calculated. Sex ratio in India is calculated as number of female per thousand male. Internationally, it was it is calculated other way around number of male per hundred female. In India, when we say that sex ratio, it means this is the number of females per thousand male. In India, sex ratio according to the data provided by 2011 census, which is the latest census right now, it is just 943. 943 women are there for 1000 male members in the society. In India, child sex ratio is also calculated. Child sex ratio is calculated for a girl children 0 to 6 years per 1000 boy children. Means, right now child sex ratio according to census of India 2011 is 919. It means, at the age of 0 to 6 years, only 919 girl children are there compared to 1000 male children. It clearly indicates the gap between male children and female children. Another surprising fact is that, normally we are habituated of blaming rural people, poor people and illiterate people for all the social problems that yes, I am not responsible, but the poor people, the rural people and the illiterate people, they are responsible for that. But the data provided regarding the child sex ratio, it debunks the facts that of course, it is not only the rural people, poor people, illiterate people, they are responsible for that, but urban people and so called illiterate people, they are also creating havoc in the society so far as female feticide is concerned, which is clearly indicated by the figures of the child sex ratio. According to the census of India 2011, child sex ratio in urban area was just 905, 905 child sex ratio is there in urban area compared to 923 in rural areas. So, sex ratio in rural area is more that is 923 compared to just 905 in urban area. It indicates why I categorically mention the difference between urban child sex ratio and rural sex ratio is that we are not supposed to get that impression that we in urban area we are so called literate and we are aware with all the facts, we are not indulged in all these things of course not because child sex ratio is more problematic in urban area compared to rural area. And this child sex ratio is indicative of the fact that female feticide is going on, despite the fact that of course, it is banned, it is illegal, but it keeps on going, child sex ratio is going on, because it is simply result of the unholy alliance between tradition and technology. Unholy alliance between tradition and technology means, tradition, the desire for a son, as per Indian system, we want son because sun is considered like a premium for old age or so far as because of the dowry system is concerned, sun will bring the money. So, there are number of benefits associated to sun. So, there is policy of desire for a sun at the same time rejection of unwanted, needless to say unwanted is girl children. So, this theory of desire for a sun and unwanted, we do not want girl children, it is indicative of the fact that female feticide is going on and which is supported by the census data that child sex ratio is declining day by day because as we just discussed that in 2011, it was 919, in 2001, it was 927, in 1991, it was 942, before that it was 962. So, dropping of child sex ratio from 962 945, 927, 919 is clearly indicative of the fact that child sex ratio is declining day by day and child sex ratio is directly related to female feticide. That is why it is a matter of concern for all of us. Because the stereotyping of female begins 
द मोमेंट नर्स सेज बेटी हुई है इट्स अ गर्ल चाइल्ड द मोमेंट नर्स सेज तो स्टेडियो टाइपिंग ऑफ फीमेल बिगिनस दैट इज नॉट अ गुड फॉर एनी कंट्री एनी सोसाइटी बिकॉज इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट इफ गर्ल चिल्ड्रेन और वीमेन दे विल बी डिस्कार्डेड फ्रॉम द सोसाइटी दे विल नॉट टेक एक्टिव पार्टिसिपेशन इन द सोसाइटी वी आर द मेल मेंबर्स कैन थिंक दैट येस वी आर रिलैक्स ऑफ कोर्स नॉट वंस मार्टिन लूथर किंग सेड दैट इन जस्टिस एनी हुएर इज अ थ्रेट टू जस्टिस एवरी हुएर सो ऑफ कोर्स वी कैन नॉट थिंक दैट वेल इट इज इन जस्टिस टू वेमेन मेल मेंबर्स कैन फील रिलैक्सड of course not like that because they are the 50% part of the society how can we ignore just the 50% women now as our topic is to discuss gender and sanitation so it's better to discuss some raw facts based on reliable data that how is gender related to sanitation we all are aware that women they are they playing major role in every society every household they are responsible for health aspects of the not only female members but male member especially the adult and the children they are responsible for kitchen work they are responsible for household activities they are responsible for bringing water when we say that bringing water all household they are not that much fortunate that they get sufficient water drinking water in their area of course it is not like that so if you think that if in the arranging water or bringing water is not that much problematic i am having the data provided by the nfhs fourth round and it talks about the serious issues related to sanitation especially in this case the water management and the women and when women are responsible for bringing water it is not generally simply by the nearby areas but sometimes it is expected that she will go for more than 30 minutes walk for bringing the water the question was asked in nfhs fourth round that who manages who brings water in the household and the data provided by the nfhs fourth round is very surprising let me share the data with you it says that person who usually collect the water 15 plus female 80% it means 15 years means those who are above the age of 15 years female they bring 80% of the water 15 plus male the male members who are the above of age 15 they bring just 16% we are so Uh, ignorant of the women issue that even the girl children means the women below the age of 15 women below the age of 15 they bring 3% of the water compared to their counterparts male member below the age of 15 they bring less than 1% 0.8% now you can easily understand it is indicative of the fact that it is not like that that we think that uh, it is our responsibility and so far as heavy work is concerned we are ready to share with our counterparts this fact that bringing water clearly indicative of the fact that even for such cases it is not like that that we keep on helping our counterparts it is not the reality which is just revealed by the ground reality as we all know that open defecation is most problematic area open defecation is problematic area for of course male and female both but it is more problematic for women because of the stigma and dignity related to women and the anatomical construction of women open defecation creates a lots of problem for women of course i am not saying that open defecation is not problematic for male it is problematic for both whether male and female but it is more problematic for female again as we know that in 39% according to the nfhs data national family health survey fourth round in 39% individual they opt for open defecation and the problem is more in rural areas where 54% individual they have to opt for open defecation because they do not have any toilet facility 
compared to their urban counterparts in urban areas as per the data provided by NFHS fourth round only 11 percent they opt for open defecation. As we all know that open defecation is problematic for women because of a number of other factors despite the fact that we attach dignity to women, we respect women and India is champion of maintaining the garima which is the counterpart of the term dignity. So, we do respect the garima of women, but it creates lots of problem open defecation especially harmful for women because of number of reasons other than the physiological problem. It creates number of physiological problem to women because women they become the prisoners of daylight. They cannot go for open defecation, they cannot go for privacy, privacy in the day night, they have to wait till the night and they either go in the late night or in the early morning. In both the cases, in both the cases they face number of problems other than the physiological and psychological problem because in the rural areas when they pass through particular road she knows that she is being uh, watched or they know that well they are going for open defecation. So, we can just imagine the psychological status of the women who are going for open defecation. Other than that they face a number of cases of eve teasing and rape. Sometimes they face even the snake biting and animal attack because they are not going in daytime, they are going in uh, night or they are going in the late night or in the early morning. So, a snake bite is another problem, the other animal attack is other problem. At the same time, the unsocial elements they are waiting for their trips and they want that well. In some times, it happens in the case of the eve teaching or rape. It is not simply that whether it is related to eve teaching and rape or her physiological problem, but above all the type of psychological stress they bear that of course, when I will go for that I will have to face. So, number of cases we see in different newspapers that because of the open defecation problem this part type of problem happens because of the open defecation that type of problem happens and even then they have to sometimes they have to wait for longer hours to uh, relieve them for the natural call and it is for male member it is very easy, but because of the physiological factor for women it is not so easy to relieve themselves. So, open defecation is another problematic issue for women. Another specific women related issue to sanitation is that so far as menstrual hygiene is concerned, menstruation is a natural process, but it is attached to it is tagged to number of socio-cultural and religious do's and don'ts and number of socio-cultural religious factors in most of the religion except a few of the religion women are considered as impure during the menstrual hygiene. They cannot complete, they cannot do the worship, they cannot enter the temple, they cannot do the normal day to day activities and other than that because of the number of social barriers they are not supposed to discuss her problems, discuss the issue with any other members of the society. Unfortunately, despite the fact that everyone knows that it is a biological fact, social stigma and other things are associated to menstrual hygiene and which compel women to think in different direction. Despite the fact that she knows that it is natural, but members of the society different culture, norm, patterns, values they compel to think women that know it is bad or it creates havoc in the minds of the women despite the fact that some serials and movies and other plans are there. The movie is there the toilet a, a prem katha or a pad man and number of uh, such uh, um, arrangements or such banner or such other things are uh, displayed in different area that for example, no toilet, no bride that particular campaign was there in Haryana that well if there won't be any toilet no one will marry their daughter to that family. So, there are different campaigns and other things are there, but despite the fact 
that we are yet to achieve the desired level of desired level of success so far as the sanitation is concerned and associated problems related to women that is there specifically related to the open defecation and the menstrual hygiene and other than that that bringing uh, drinkable water from far away despite the fact that she had supposed to cook the food and do all other assigned tasks being female she is supposed to do. Well, there is lack of awareness. We just discussed in the initial data that there is lack of education or the female literacy. We are yet to realize that female literacy is essential for the society. Of course, male literacy is equally responsible, but female literacy is more responsible because she continues the generation and she stays in the family, she will look after the children and in that particular context, I am reminded of one of the renowned sociologists of Ghana, Agri. Agri once requesting the parents to send their daughters to co-ed school in Ghana, requested the parents by saying, and I quote, if you educate a man, you educate an individual. If you educate a woman, you educate a nation, a family, unquote. It means, of course, we all know that, that importance of female literacy is more compared to male literacy, because so far as literacy is concerned, well, male, they, of course, they are supposed to be literate and they are supposed to learn. But at the same time, women as a mother, she nurtures, she look after the children. So, if she is educated, that will not only be helpful for one individual, but that will be helpful for the society and larger level at the national and uh, other level also, because her contribution plays major role in upbringing of the children. Of course, father also plays important role, but mother's role cannot be compared with father's role so far as literacy is concerned. So, keeping in mind such suggestions, we should also try our best to educate our girl children. And in this education, despite the fact that in national education policy 2020, which is the latest education policy, there is provision of gender inclusion fund, means it was realized that in national education policy that gender inclusion fund is used for exclusively for women, number of problems or in number of institute admission or the ratio of male female is very imbalanced or girl children's presence is not felt in number of institutions. So, it is dedicated gender inclusion fund and the national education policy pays sufficient attention to gender issue and sanitation issue, of course, that is there. But number of girl children could not complete even the higher level of education because immediately after attaining the her particular age because of menstrual hygiene and other issue and if in particular issue there is no separate toilet for girl children and even there is no toilet in the school, there is dropout in the girl children. So, dropout rate of the girl children people may not understand that well women they are not able to continue the education. They may not feel that okay sanitation is that much issue that it prohibits women or it plays major role in dropping off of girl children, but of course it is there. Now you dear learners, you may think from that angle that if in any school there is no toilet or especially there is no uh, separate toilet for girl children, how can girl children can continue to attend that school. And when she will not be able to attend the school because of the toilet facility, then how can we think of that yes from sanitation angle everything is clean and other things are ok, civil system is good. But these aspects are also closely associated to sanitation aspect. As we discussed number of times that sanitation does not mean simply cleaning and sewage system, drainage system, facility of water, etcetera, but these social issues are closely associated to sanitation issue, which generally people do not realize. And keeping in mind the importance of this sanitation issue, number of programs are there 
related to women and sanitation by the government India, even number of initiatives are there at state level to promote or to empower the women, just to uh, promote women. So far at state level, at national level, number of schemes are there. And as we talk about the human right, the same way even keeping in mind the importance of sanitation and water, it is part of the human right. And on 20th July 2010, UN General Assembly and UN Rights Council recognized a human right to water and sanitation. So, water and sanitation is of course, part of human right to right to sanitation is closely associated to women. Of course, male they are also part of that, but because we are dedicating our today's lecture to gender issue. So, of course, it is more important for them, not only because of the hygiene angle, because of the physiological angle, but just think for a while because of the psychological level, the trauma related to related to number of sanitation aspects. And if we will keep on ignoring women's aspects, how can we think that we will have enjoy particular type of society in that particular way. It is not possible, it is not possible in any society that you just keep on ignoring women and you will get succeed. Of course, it is not possible, because women's rights is considered as most important fact, despite the fact that number of rules and regulations are there in our society, but there is urgent need to convert from de zero reality to de facto reality. Maybe different rules and regulations are there, but really they are approachable to women or we claim that number of schools are there in particular area, number of uh, sanitation related other aspects or data are there, but whether if toilet is there, water is supplied to that toilet or not, or that toilet is closed or open for using the students or not. These are some of the important issues, where we are supposed to understand that not simply the data, not simply the figure that well, this is the reality or I have completed my task, this is my responsibility as an officer related to handling that issue. Of course not, it is not simply that those who are assigned the particular task, because gender issue is not a women's issue, it is a human issue. So, we are supposed to understand that it is a human issue, it is not like that it is gender issue is women's issue, that only women are supposed to look after such issues or I am not supposed to be blamed, because this is not my responsibility. Of course, not everyone is supposed to be blamed, because we are part and parcel of the society. When we think that yes, we the members of the society, in Indian constitution it is said, we the people of India, what does it mean when we say the we the people of India? Try to understand the power, try to understand the weightage of this quote unquote we. How can we use the term we, if we keep on ignoring between the uh, playing game between the I and me? Yes, we the male members are safe, we the male members are enjoying, they the women, they are not doing that. Of course, not. We are supposed to respect the real we and for respecting real we, we are supposed to keep in mind the real improvement of women. And for that, whether it is related to literacy level, whether it is related to any other level, we all are supposed to keep in mind that particular thing. The way we socialize our children, suppose we keep on telling our children that yes, you are supposed to do that, but at the time of socialization process, we train our boy children in a particular way, we train our girl children in particular way, it is going to affect. It is not like that officially we declare anything, only then people learn. But as we just discussed that gender, we mold the psyche of girl children or boy children. So, if we mold the boy children in a particular way that yes, you are boy, you can do whatever you like and we keep on suggesting our girl children, no, 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 look you are a girl, you cannot do that. So, this type of molding the personality of girl children is not better for any society. So, at that juncture, we are supposed to look after not at adult age, but at initial stage, we are supposed to 
try to understand that well how to imbibe good personality traits in that because anything that is there at initial level in the young children whether the male and female at adult age that is going to influence the psyche and that is going to influence his or her behavior and accordingly the society expects from everyone that look you are supposed to behave in that particular way, you are supposed to behave in that particular way, I am supposed to behave, I am male, I am female. So, such type of categorization is already there, which needs to be bridged. I am reminded of one of the Hindi films, where hero comments to heroine, unquote, tum mein ladkiyon wali koi baat hi nahi hai. I repeat, tum mein ladkiyon wali koi baat hi nahi hai. It means your behavior is not like or according to the prescribed norms and patterns a girl of Indian society should behave. So, you are supposed to behave like a established norms and patterns and certain things you are supposed to. When hero comments tumne ladkiyon wali koi baat nahi hai, try to understand because heroine was not typical to Indian culture, her behavior was not typical like Indian girl, her dress manner was not typical to girl children and she was freely interacting with the, uh, their counterparts, the boy, uh, friends etcetera. Keeping in mind that the hero comments. Now, when we say that tumme larkyo wali koi baat nahi hai means there is fixed total call or certain do's and don'ts a girl is supposed to behave girl is supposed to behave dress in a particular dress up in a particular way behave in a particular way speak in a particular way listen in a particular way in, interact in a particular way of course this so called stereotyping is not good for any society that's why today there is another term we all are supposed to understand so that we can not only solve the gender related issue, but we can also solve the sanitation and gender relation. There is one term called androgyny. If you search in the dictionary, this is negative term, this is medical term, biological term. It talks about the combination of the anatomical both male and female, which is in negative sense it is uh, used. But in social science, it is used in positive sense. Androgyny means having combination of personality traits of both male and female. So, what does it mean if one imbibes the personality of androgynous personality traits? What does it mean that if male member will do certain extra job which are supposed to be done by female counterparts? For example, if husband or male member looks after children, he helps his wife in the kitchen, he helps other household work to his wife. At the same time, if wife or women helps husband in outdoor activities, earning money, doing anything which is not supposed to be done by women, that is known as having combination of both the personality traits. So, the androgynous personality traits is the need of the aha. We are supposed to develop that if we inculcate in at the initial level in the children that look, it is not like that these are the do's and don'ts. When we mold the definition of gender, we are not supposed to tell them look, you are male, you are supposed to do whatever you like. Of course, you are female, you cannot, there are number of do's and don'ts related to women. If we inculcate at that level that well, you are male or you are female, you are supposed to behave in that particular way, you are supposed to be helpful. They should not inculcate that yes, my opinion or my behavior should not be like that, I am female. So, that type of clear cut compartmentalization should not be imposed on male children or female children. If we inculcate in them that androgynous personality traits, so that whether they are male or they are female, according to their need, according to their requirement, they can easily do the job, whether if she is alone or he is alone, it is not like that he cannot do anything in the kitchen or she cannot go outside home. So, if inculcate that level, we are upbringing up children, we are giving not only our children a good future, but we are giving a good future to our society also. Same is there when we talk about the eve teaching or rape or when we think that well our family members they are going 
outside for appendification. It is not related to particular family, it is not related to X or Y. When all the women of that society, that area, they are going, it means all the members, male members of that society, they are supposed to behave in a sensitive way, because it is not like that they, those who are going, they are the outsiders. Even if they are outsiders, we are supposed to behave in a particular way, but we are supposed to that if we can provide them conducive atmosphere in the society, they are also human being, they are also supposed to lead a happy and normal life. As we are entitled as a male member, we are entitled to lead a happy and normal life. They are also simply because they are female, it is not like that they are supposed to detached from the normal social norms, patterns and culture. So, sanitation issue, of course, it touches upon the issues related to women in a more particular way, because whether it is related to bringing water, whether it is related to cleaning in the house, we are supposed to inculcate. It is not like that if women, they are not in the family, we are not supposed to clean the house we are not supposed to maintain the sanitary situation good in our household. Why? Of course, we are also supposed to learn. Just simple example, when we said, when guest, any guest arrives at our home, generally girl children are trained to offer a glass of water to the guest. Why can't a boy child who is sitting, he can also offer a guest a glass of water? We should train our boy children also that how to offer a glass of water to the guest. Why only we are training, giving training to our girl children how to do that. The same way, why we will train our girl children only how to make the house clean. We are also supposed to tell our boy children also that you are supposed to. Same in the kitchen also. We are not supposed to train only our girl children that well, this is your domain, kitchen is your domain. Because when we are training them, indirectly we are training our boy child that yes, you are not supposed to, this is not your job. At initial level, we start training, then we should train them in that particular way. Because for example, when children are uh, playing with the toy set, have you ever heard any boy child playing with the kitchen set? Of course not. Why only girl children, they are promoted to play with the kitchen set? This is very simple thing, we may not pay sufficient attention that okay, girl children are playing with the kitchen set, but it has a long lasting effect in the minds of girl children that well, kitchen is my domain, I am supposed to at the same time boy generally play with the uh, bats and ball and other uh, things, they know that well, no, 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 this is not my domain, my domain is something different. So, the clear cut compartmentalization of domain, it is going to affect the future of not only that child, but future of the society also, because when we are staying in the society, as it is said, those who are children today, tomorrow they will be father, tomorrow they will be mother. So, today children, they are supposed to play active role in tomorrow's society. If we focus on nurturing them in a particular way, because we all know that even being male, we face a number of problems, because generally the sanitation issue is discussed, it is not generally focused on gender issue. Even then, number of problems are associated to sanitation issue. We face in our day to day life that well, number of problems are there so far as sanitation issue is concerned. When being male, we face number of problems related to sanitation. Just imagine all these problems are being faced by uh, women also, because there is no as such any problem which is being faced specifically by the male members of the society. You will not count any problem that well, these are the problems being faced by male members of the society, you will not find. But there are number of problems which we have just discussed that these are the issues being faced by women and women only, not simply because of the uh, biological issues as we discussed that because she belongs to particular sex, but when we frame the gender, for example, social stigma, for example, bringing water for the family, it is not like that, that only it is related to women, 
it is not that it is like menstrual problem that this is biological problem issues this is biological issue and it is related to women only but even male member can go to bring the water here comes the importance of the gender issue because we frame our mindset in that particular way that okay girl are there they are supposed to manage the household course they are supposed to manage the household activities that is why no 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 I am not responsible. So, just imagine that even adult female 80 percent they are going and as we discussed in the data only 16 percent male problem lies here problem lies here that when we mold the psyche when we convert the sex into gender in every society and as it is deeply rooted in the social construction society. So, we may claim from other angle that yes we are modern, we are updated, we are ultra modern fine we all are supposed to be modern by mindset also when we claim that yes we are modern we are supposed to detach ourselves from such parochial mindset that no, no, no this is my not my responsibility this is my wife's responsibility, my sister's responsibility, my mother's responsibility. So, we keep on discarding a number of responsibilities simply because I am a male member of the society. When we talk about sanitation issue, we should keep in mind that when we raise the issue related to gender, of course, it should necessarily be kept in mind that gender and sanitation these two are interrelated issues. Maybe we may solve number of problems related to sanitation, but unless until we touch upon such issues which are typically related to women, how can we solve the issues related to sanitation and for that we are supposed to help them. We may talk about gender equality. Of course, gender equality is there, but it is little bit different from gen different from that of gender equity. Gender equality means when at economic level generally we treat both male and female member at par. Well, we are sending our daughters to particular type of school, we are sending our sons to particular type of school, we are giving them the particular brand name of dress both male and female we are providing them, we provide them the same type of food no problem. It means at economic level when we are treating both girl children and boy children at par it is known as gender equality. To some extent we are moving towards gender equality, but gender equity it is related to psychological or moral values when we treat both male and female members at par from moral and psychological level then we say that we are following gender equity. For example, if our son asks that well I want to go for outing for 5 days with my friends, we happily say yes you may go, but if our daughter says I want to go for 2 days with my friends, no, no, no you cannot go you are girl and that too alone no, no, no it is not possible. Here lies the importance of moral and psychological angle. If boy, if the sons wants that well I want to be late because I will be late in the coaching, we say no, no problem keep on your concentrate on your study, but if daughter says I will be late because there will be extra class, no, no, no you cannot be late you have to reach our home before the night. These things are clear cut related to moral and psychological angle, moral and psychological angle if we feel that yes we really want to promote the gender equality only then we will be able to achieve the optimum level of sanitation. So, not only we are supposed to be maintain gender equality, but also we are supposed to maintain the gender equity, because unless until we achieve both gender equity and equality, how can we say that yes we are happy and we will be. Uh, safe in saying that from gender angle also sanitation is secured, because sanitation we keep on discussing the sanitation issue. It is not simply related that sanitation is important, of course sanitation does matter for both male and female, but with these examples which we just discussed number of examples are there through which we can easily understand that it is important for both male and female, but dear learners as you all know that 
it is more important for female. And if we think from that angle, the different sectors we just discussed, if we pay sufficient attention to that means women should be taken care of or all those needs, whether those needs are related to physiological aspects or those needs are related to socio-cultural aspects, we are supposed to pay sufficient attention to it. And for that, it is not like that it is job of any single individual, but number of individuals are supposed to play active role in that whether they are male or they are female, because it the debate should not be considered as male versus female. It is as we discussed, it is human issue. So, women are equally responsible for making the society gender equality, because it is not only the domain of male. It is not like that when we train our children that do not do that you are male, do not do that you are female only the fathers they suggest that, but the mothers also they train, they nurture the children. So, it is not like that when we training, giving the training to our children, only the fathers they are involved in that, mothers are equally involved in that. So, when mother they are giving training to the children, they are also supposed to be very careful that the types of socialization I am giving, it is going to give long lasting effect. And what I think that as a mother that I should not be, be behave like this or I have should have faced this problem. I should train my children not only the girl children, but the male children also that well you are behaving with others, you are supposed to respect the female or we are supposed to train our female. Sometimes mothers they are not aware that well I am socializing my children in that particular way. See, indirectly or unconscious minds, it trains children in that way, which as having the long lasting effect in the minds of the people and that is going to have detrimental effect. For example, when for a small things, child wants mother that whether I should do that or not, mother says, well let me ask your father or go to ask your father, he will decide. This is very simple thing, that innocent mother perhaps does not know that when I am suggesting my son or daughter that okay, your father will decide, I do not know, let me ask your uh, my husband or let me ask your father. This is simple thing, mother says very innocently, but that is having long lasting effect in the minds of the children. Indirectly, the child learns that well, in family, father is 100 percent and mother is 0. If daughter is there, she will learn that this is my future my role in the family will be zero, because I will not actively part in any, take part in any household decision making. At the same time, with the same statement, the son learns that well, I will be boss of my family, because at that stage mother trains that look, your father will decide. So, women are also supposed to be very careful when interacting with the children, when training their children that well, she should know that I am socializing my children and that will remain in her mind. The types of problem we faced should not be faced by my children. So, it is responsibility of both the parents, mother and the father to train the children in such a way that they should be whether the male child or female child responsible citizen of the society and they should learn how to respect each other. Only then at that level if we train, if we nurture our children in such a way, they can easily start learning that yes, whether male or female, we all are equal. We can easily inculcate the endogenous personality traits, whether in this situation or that situation, we can work hand in hand, we can contribute to the society in a same way. In that particular way, sanitation can play vital role in creating awareness among the male members of the society and female members of the society. So, in this particular way, we all are supposed to understand that sanitation, let me summarize it that sanitation is of course, vital issue in the society, but it is more important for female children or for that we have to work hard. Work hard means it is not job of overnight, we have to 
train our children in such a way, we have to create that atmosphere in the society in such a way, we have to create that atmosphere in our workplace, we have to create that atmosphere in our school, colleges, academic institutes and wherever we are go. We should provide that conducive atmosphere everywhere, only then women may feel relaxed at the same time when they are going for open defecation, open defecation itself a problem, but going alone should not be a matter of havoc uh, for women. And for that we are supposed to play active role. It is not like that, that women alone can solve all the issues. We can solve the problem with making hands with the women and creating awareness in the society. As we know that gender is a social issue. So, it is not like that, that it is a biological issue that it will be looked after by itself. We have to frame and as we know that the definition of gender keeps on changing. So, maybe in today's society, maybe during our grandparents time, maybe during our parents time, this was the situation, this was the compartmentalized form of women and men. We are here, we claim ourselves that yes, we are from new generation, we are modern. So, our modernity should be indicated by the fact that also that we should respect when we say that we are modern, we do not believe in any hierarchy, we do not believe in any inequality. Why to maintain and above all, they are your own members, they are your brothers, they are your sisters, they are your husband and wife, they all are there. In family, when you are there, you face the same problem. We all other problem we do discuss, we do think that yes, it should be resolved. If we sit together to discuss any other issue, why not this gender issue? Because if we sit together to discuss, yes, these are the issues related to gender, these are the issues related to sanitation, we can easily solve the problem. And for that, we are supposed to make them aware that yes, you are supposed to behave in a particular way, you are supposed to do gender sensitive, sensi sensitive behavior and not only gender sensitive behavior, but sanitation sensitive behavior. So, we are supposed to club these two aspects of gender and sens uh, sanitation. Only then we can think that well, our this understanding of this course sociology of sanitation is fruitful and we have to, we are supposed to imbibe these personality traits, not only at theoretical level, but what we are saying, we are supposed to practice that also. And when we practice in our household, others will also be trained, others will also learn that okay, if as a senior you are behaving in that particular way, your juniors, your subordinates in your in office, others will also learn that well, we should provide atmosphere in such a way that no one should feel that yes, I am victimized because of my gender. Gender should not be any basis of any type of victimization, any type of problem because ultimately it is psychological issue. When psychologically we feel that yes, we are inferior or in other way, yes, we are superior. So, that complex of superiority and inferiority is not good because if we will not allow them to work in full, how can we get the benefit of demographic dividend in our society? We are claiming that yes, we are enjoying that demographic dividend. So, for getting demographic dividend, if we ignore the 50 percent population, how can we get? So, for getting the 50 percent, not only 50 percent, but 100 percent benefit of demographic dividend, from that angle also, we are supposed to get the benefit of the women. And for that, we are supposed to concentrate on all these listed issues which we just discussed with the ground reality that yes, women should participate, not only participate, but women should actively participate because if we train them in that particular way, they may feel that yes, I am worth living. She may realize that my life is also worth living and society needs my support, society needs my help. And when at family level, at a small level, at micro level, we get sufficient help from mother, why not at micro level, why not at larger level, we are allowing our girl children or the women to participate actively in day to day life. 
this is how we are supposed to learn from this special lecture on sanitation and gender issue because sanitation is related to gender and gender it in itself is a problematic issue so far as it is molded it is constructed by the society and as because of the patriarchal mindset we keep on talking that yes particular uh, gender the male is superior another gender that is female that is inferior so that superiority inferiority complex is not good because if we keep on thinking about superiority inferiority complex it is not going to help us in future and for that very purpose we are supposed to train both male and female in a better way and in that particular way it is hoped that with today's lecture you will not only learn that yes now onwards i will maintain in my family gender equity and gender equality and there won't be any discrimination related to sanitation in my family and i will not allow it to happen in my society with this firm determination you can change a lot you can change the society i have uh, gone through these uh, references for your understanding and i am suggesting you that please go through these reference list which is displayed there also you can go through the karuna chananaj socialization women and education explorations in gender identity book you can go through anil kumar singh has book rethinking gender equality you can go through anil kumar singh has article right to sanitation and dignity of women in the edited volume of bindeswar pathak's book sociology of sanitation environmental sanitation public health and social deprivation you can go through bk nagala's book sociology of sanitation you can go through bk nagala's article problems of sanitation in india does culture match matter it is an article you can go through madhu nagala's book gender and health you can go through richard pyce's book sociology of sanitation you can go through bindeswar pathak's book edited volume sociology of sanitation environmental sanitation public health and social deprivation you can go through ashish saxena's book sociology of sanitation other than these books you can also consult any books any material related to area which will be helpful for you so thanks a lot for your patience hearing and in next fifth lecture we will concentrate our discussion on sanitation and socialization thanks a lot hello everybody now uh, the discussion which i would try to um, make uh, talk to you is about the excitement which i always feel and i'm sure you will also reciprocate as i proceed and when you do the course is in the area of multivariate statistical problems and multivariate statistical analysis so what we mean by multivariate so we know that statistics is a, is a subject where you ha have a lot of data you try to analyze that using different type of techniques like estimation problem mcmc techniques then forecasting and the area of time series analysis and then try to basically find out the best forecasting tool which you have such that you are able to gain the maximum amount of information from a set of data now in the recent past as we see that multivariate statistics has 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 really increased in a in in a very exciting manner and if i trace back to history it has been going on slowly for the last about 70 80 years but now the time has come where it is being used in a very big way and the techniques which we all know but which are being utilized with new vigor are in the area of say for example 
canonical correlation technique in the area of factor analysis, in the area of conjoint analysis, in the area of clustering analysis, in the area of multidimensional uh, 